Hi everybody, this is Danai, and you might be wondering why I'm sitting next to a fireplace, but I thought it was very fitting because today's video is going to be all about answering a question that I have been getting quite a lot from you guys, and the question is, what do I do when I get cold hands? How can I play the piano with cold hands, especially when you get cold hands before an exam or before a performance, a concert or a competition, which is a very common symptom that pianists get. So today I will be sharing my thoughts on this topic. So if you're interested in hearing my thoughts on that topic and also what I do to combat this symptom, then keep on watching. So I want to start off this video by telling you that I am one of the candidates as many, many people that used to get extremely cold hands before a concert performance. So I'm not one of the lucky ones that has never experienced cold hands. I have experienced cold hands a lot when I was younger. This was a very common thing before any concert, before any competition, I would be having ice cold hands. Some people get sweaty hands and sweaty palms. I never got sweaty hands. I always got ice cold hands. So I definitely know what it feels like. I have experienced it and I've tried a million different things to combat it over the years. And I will share some and especially I will share what I find now to be the most effective thing. So in general, there are two approaches. There is the symptomatic approach in which you can try to just warm the hands up with different techniques, which I will talk about in a minute. And then there is the mental approach in which you can try to combat the whole nervousness because having cold hands is a symptom of being nervous or scared. Of course, as you can probably already guess, I am a fan of the mental approach because that's actually how you will get rid of cold hands in the long term. But I want to cover both approaches because they both can help towards reaching the end goal. So when I was younger, I wasn't thinking that much about the mental aspect. I was just thinking about how to warm those cold hands up. And I did many different things. I used to travel to concerts with gloves and always have gloves on backstage in order to warm my hands up. I used to put my hands on the radiator um, in my dressing room and just warm them up there. I used to have these special little cushions. I don't even know what they're called, but they were little cushions with a transparent liquid inside and they were, they were made out of plastic and then they had a little silver thing inside and you used to just have to click on it and then a white liquid would come out that was very warm and they would be kind of squishy. You, you could warm your hands just while touching it and then after a while it would get hard and cold but that's when the concert would have already started. Well, I used to use those cushions. I used to just put them right here on my neck. This is something that another pianist told me once here or here actually under the armpit or here at the neck because those places are always warm just to warm them up. Then I tried both approaches, put them in warm water, never hot water. That's one thing that definitely doesn't work because if you put them in hot water, then they will just cool off immediately. But if you just put them in lukewarm water, that can be helpful. And then someone else told me, no, you actually have to put cold water on them and then they will warm up after that. That never worked for me, but apparently it worked for someone. So I tried all these different approaches and they helped sometimes. Of course, yes, I had slightly warmer hands when going on stage and that kind of calmed my nerves. So I did use these things, but they never really made the cold hands go away as a whole concept. I'm very glad to say that nowadays, I never really get ice cold hands before I go on stage. I sometimes get colder hands, but never this ice cold thing that I used to experience when I was younger. So now let's get into the whole mental approach. What to me was an important step in combating the cold hand symptom was to understand why we get cold hands. And it is a very natural stress response of our body. So of course we get the cold hands when we are nervous because we are scared of the experience to come. It is intimidating to us and our body is on high alert. So before an exam, before a concert, before a competition, those are the moments when we get cold hands. We usually don't get this type of cold hands in the practice room. This happens when we have to perform. So when it is the most crucial actually to be the best. The reason why this happens is because if you look at it from an evolutionary perspective, 
we used to be on high alert when there was a wild animal that was in our vicinity. And the people, when they heard sounds or when they knew they might be confronted by a wild animal, would get this stress response and maybe be intimidated by the situation and release adrenaline in order to be ready to perform. They would have to perform, literally fight against the animal. And that's why the body learned to actually put all the blood into the important organs. So this is why there is also this expression called cold feet, for example, when you're stressed, because when you are stressed or scared or intimidated by an upcoming situation and know you have to now perform, our body just instinctively puts all the blood or most of the blood into the center, into the important organs that need to function and away from the extremities. So away from the hands, away from the feet, away from the fingers, away from the toes, because that's not what's most important in that life or death situation. And also I read that somewhere Another reason why this happens is that if, let's say, the wild bear bites a finger off, there's not too much blood there, so you don't bleed to death. So this is just a little backstory, but to me, this backstory was very helpful in understanding why my body acts that way. It's not that my body is failing me, it's not that my body doesn't want me to perform well in the concert, it's simply something that we need to look at from an evolutionary perspective, like so many other things that happen in our bodies. And once I understood that, I already was in a different place mentally, because I felt like, okay, I understand what this is, so now let's try to embrace it. So now embracing it from the mental perspective, I find has two different components. The one component is kind of a lifestyle component. There are many general regular things you can do to combat cold hands that have to do, for example, with exercise, exercise regularly, nutrition, uh, don't drink too much coffee, for example, all these types of things, nutrition, exercise, get enough sleep, stretch, you know, just to really make sure that you have a good blood flow. Of course, all these things help and also mentally calm you down because, you know, I did all these things, so they will help combat the cold hands. But the most important thing is to mentally kind of turn that switch when you are in that moment. So as always, when it comes to fear, understanding the fear is step one. So now that we've understood the fear, it comes from this whole evolutionary thing. And that now that we also know we are not in a situation where we might be attacked by a wild bear, but we're actually in a situation where we'll now go on stage or go in front of a jury or our teacher to play. So it is not a life or death situation. That can be the first step that is going to calm you down. Another mental switch is to understand that there is no life-threatening danger that awaits you when you walk out on stage. Of course, it can be intimidating, but try to get your body away from that response of, oh, my life is in danger by mentally not thinking that way. There is no one in the audience or in the jury or um, your teacher that wants to harm you. On the contrary, most probably everybody is rooting for you. Everybody wants you to do well. So once you accept that and know that you're not in danger, but actually try to enjoy the experience and be in the moment, the cold hands will also go away. Another important tip is breathing. When we get stressed, we start to do shallow breathing. That also makes the cold hands become more. So try to take deep breaths, calming breaths, and try to, in that way, combat the cold hand symptom as well. And another very big one is meditation. That, of course, also falls into the regular habits, but I find it important to mention, either if you are someone that incorporates meditation into your daily practice, that's amazing, that's great, and I'm sure then for you it is much easier to find a place of calm, a mental place of serenity and calmness when you are in a stressful situation like that. If you are not, then try it out. Try to put yourself in this place of calm and then picture that situation where you go on stage and try to get into that feeling where you are scared. And then while you meditate, calm yourself down and try to combat it just mentally. And then the next time when you actually are in that situation, you might already feel that it's more realistic that you will succeed in combating those nerves that make your hands cold. Now, very practically speaking, for me at least it was always like that. 
when I was nervous, I would get these ice cold hands. I would go on stage. The first few pages would feel extremely awkward playing with these cold hands. But then as time progressed, my hands would get warmer and warmer because of course you start moving them, you start getting into the music and the nerves subside. So this is why I started to focus on really practicing and mastering the beginning of my performance. If it's a piano concerto, the beginning of the piano concerto. If it's an exam where you're playing multiple pieces, then the beginning of the first piece. Practice that beginning of the first piece in every possible situation. Practice it, well, of course, performing it for others, but practice it after you've been running, when you have an elevated heartbeat. Practice it when you come out of the shower. Practice it first thing in the morning without warming up. Practice it in every thinkable situation so that you in turn mentally have the feeling that you can perform this even with the coldest of hands. And once you do that and you feel that you are equipped to perform the beginning of that piece no matter what happens, then you're also less scared. And for me, it, this is really one of the key strategies that I use. I feel that I can perform the beginning of my concert in any situation that you give me. You wake me up in the middle of the night, I can play that beginning quite well. And if you have that feeling, most likely you won't even get to that ice cold hand stadium because you're not that scared. You know that the beginning is secure and is set. And then once you're in it, the rest will come automatically anyway. Nowadays, when I am backstage in the final 10 minutes before a concert, I am actually in a quite calm state. Yes, I do feel the adrenaline and I need to feel the adrenaline in order to perform my best on stage and maybe reach an even higher level than I ever did before when I was practicing, but I accept it for what it is. I embrace it. I don't try to combat the adrenaline, which would then release this whole feeling of stress and then in turn probably create the cold hands. I try to accept it and then I try to feel it and use it to my advantage. So. I, I try to love the feeling of being nervous and that's what stops me from getting cold hands. And even if I do get cold hands, I tell myself, doesn't matter because I know the beginning of that piece so well, I can even play it with icy cold hands. And then once I get to the other bits, my hands will have warmed up anyway. And I can tell you that this has worked really well for me. I never get these icy cold hands and even if I do, they don't scare me that much. And if I feel like it is a bit cold in my dressing room or I, I am a bit stressed and somehow it didn't work mentally and my hands are a bit cold, I will of course rub them a bit or put them on the radiator for maybe 20 seconds and then it'll be enough for me to feel secure to walk out on stage. Keep in mind, of course, this was a year long process for me to go from ice cold hands and being scared to now feeling very comfortable. So don't think that this will happen overnight, but I really do hope that this strategy helps you as much as it helped me. I hope that the knowledge behind what is happening in our body and accepting it and then turning it around and understanding your story will help you as well. For me, it really was a key thing that changed my perspective and really enhanced the experience of performing for me. Let me know your thoughts on this and also let me know if you have other strategies to combat cold hands, symptomatic ones as well as mental ones. Both are important to reach the end result. If you enjoyed this video, please leave it a like and subscribe to my channel. That would help me a lot. And I will see you again in my next video next week. Bye.